Okay. Uh, we're just going to quickly see if this works and go through the basics of this idea. Yeah. Let's go to this. Tana. The Oto Hayom. On that day. Not the Oto Shehishiv, right? It's on, not on the day that, but on that day. Hishiv Rabbi Eliezer Ko Chivot He gave every possible proof for his position. What kind of proofs? Presumably logical, textual, um, the kinds of proof you would expect in a rabbinic debate. The low key blue him and him. They did not accept his position. All right. So he has pulled out all the stops. He's given all the arguments. He's totally certain in his position. They keep rejecting it. They stick to their position. But he is super invested in winning this argument. He takes it to the next level. Amar lahem. Im halakha kamoti. See that phrase is so, almost exactly the same as the phrase we saw in the first story. If the law is like me, charuv zayuchiyach. And this tree will prove it. You have to think about how will the tree, how does the tree serve as proof for his position? Well, clearly, since we see what the tree does, the fact that the tree is doing something supernatural is, according to Rabbi Eliezer, proof that he's right. In other words, the supernatural is proof that God supports his view. And since God supports his view, the law must be like his view. Notice those terms that we were throwing around in the first story coming back. It uprooted from its place and yes, fill in and moved a hundred amot, maybe four hundred amot. Doesn't matter. Regardless of the distance, they say back to him, Amru. Watch that plural. They say to him, the other rabbis, Ain mevi'in re'aya. That is a plural verb. And the only subject of the plural verb can be we. We do not bring proofs in rabbinic debate from carob trees. A surprising thing to have to uh, to have to say explicitly in a uh, in a debate about interpretation. But there you have it. We do not bring, or we might say, we do not accept proofs in debates from carob trees. The plural of Yochichu is presumably because it's referring to the Maim as opposed to the Ama. Um, the canal, the waters will prove it. That is the exact parallel structure. They started flowing backwards. Amrulo. He is rejected a second time. And now a third. The walls of the Beit Midrash will prove it. What are, what are they going to do? Well, he too, pay attention to that word, he too. Hita is to lean. He too quote le beti midrash lipo. He too lipo. They leaned to fall. Why is that important? Because they don't, unlike the tree that actually moves and the waters that actually start flowing backwards, here these walls don't fall, they lean towards falling. Ga'ar Bahem Rabbi Yoshua. 
now, up till now, the only actor in this story has been Rabbi Yezer. And then the other rabbis as a group have rejected him. But suddenly, Rabbi Yehoshua emerges as his uh, sparring partner. But Rabbi Yehoshua doesn't speak to Rabbi Eliezer. Gar Bahem, Rabbi Yehoshua. Rabbi Yehoshua called it them. Them who? Well, Amar Lahem said, said to them, Im Tamidei Chachamim menatchim zeta b'halacha. If Tamidei Chachamim are battling each other, b'halacha, atem ma tivchem. What business is it of yours? Who is he speaking to? Only you got to use you got to use the logical thinking here. The only possible addressee is the walls themselves. Sometimes Eliezer said the walls will prove my point, and the walls go about starting to prove his point. They do what he told them to do, but then when Yeshua yells them and says, "Butt out." They also try to do what Rabbi Yeshua told them to do. So all of a sudden, the nature of Rabbi Eliezer's proof, the fact that Rabbi Eliezer was able to get the tree and the water to do these crazy things on command, it suddenly means something a little different if Rabbi Yeshua, his opponent, can do it too. Because look what happened to the walls. Lo naflu mipnei kavodah shel Rabbi Yeshua. They didn't fall the way down. Mipnei kavodah shel. Out of respect for. Lo zakfu mipnei kavodah shel Rabbi Eliezer. But they couldn't stand back up. Out of respect for Rabbi Eliezer. The adain matin the omdin. They remain leaning, stuck in the middle between these two giants of the law.